Welcome to our dungeon. Today, I'm gonna to give you a tour of our freezer, showing you exactly what and how I freeze things to save so much money regularly on groceries, as well as give you a great big tip on how you can actually use what is in your freezer. Hey there, Brittany Flammer here with videos all about budgeting and money saving tips. If you want to be able to afford to live a life you love, hit the bell along with that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos. Our freezer was a hot mess. Well, I guess technically it's more of a cold, frozen mess, but it was so messy we went, I went through, cleaned it out, got rid of all those nasty, gunky crumbs that accumulate at the bottom, and reorganized so there is no time like the present to show you what we've got. Let's start with bread. I will buy bread at the store when it is on sale, and I will buy several extra so that I can freeze them. And when I freeze them, I double bag them. So this is what I buy at the grocery store. I, I simply put it inside of another bread bag. So when I'm done using my bread bags, I just shake out the crumbs and I use the, I save them so that I can use them to freeze things. But double bagging the bread helps it prevent freezer burn so it stays a lot better for a lot longer. Same thing for homemade bread. After I'm done baking bread, I will double bag it in bread bags from the store and stick it in the freezer. Sometimes at the grocery store, that French bread will be on markdown on clearance for like 60, 50, 60 cents. I like to buy it and I'll slice it up, double bag it, and keep it in the freezer for French bread. Or I'll cut it into small pieces to do a French toast bake. Muffins or baked goods, really any type of baked goods will freeze well. These are just muffins. I just doubled the batch. We ate some for breakfast one morning and I froze what was left. So now I have another breakfast or another snack for my kids. I just stick it in Ziploc freezer bags or double bag it. Pancakes, another breakfast to have on hand. When we make them, my husband actually makes them. So after my husband's done making the pancakes, we will let them cool, then I'll lay them out on a cookie sheet, stick them in the freezer for like 15, 20 minutes. It's called flash freezing. I'll pull them out and then I stick them in the Ziploc bag. If I do that, they don't stick together. So if I want, I can just pull one out and warm up one for a kid. If I, once they're cooled, if I just stick them all in a bag, then they clump together and, and stick together and don't freeze as well. Who doesn't love homemade jam? Freezer jam is easy to make and delicious, so much better than store-bought. So if you grow your own fruit or berries, make your own. So at the grocery store, strawberries were on sale for 88 cents a pound. So I bought a bunch and made a bunch of freezer jam. Of course, any snacks that you find or buy from the freezer section, like Go-Gurts, are great to freeze. We love having snacks on hand, so when these are on rebate at Sam's, I stock up and freeze them. I don't love freezer meals as much as freshly baked meals, but I love having a couple of freezer meals on hand. So when I'm making something that will freeze well, I'll just double it and stick it in a disposable pan, line it with some of that press and seal wrap, some tin foil, write what it is and any instructions I need to bake. I can bake it just like normal. So if I think about it in advance, I can pull it out of the freezer the night before and let it thaw on the fridge and bake like normal. Or if I forget, I pull it out right before I'm ready to make dinner, I can just bake it for about twice as long. And I like to store them in the freezer. I stack them on top of each other and I make sure that the newest one goes on bottom. So I'm always using the oldest one first. You ever open up cans of sauce of some sort and your recipe only calls for a couple of tablespoons or half of a can? Freeze the rest. I just use my Rubbermaid containers and I freeze them. Make sure you have a little bit, it's called headspace, a little bit of space around the top because liquids will expand. But all sauces, this is salsa verde, which my recipe only calls for like a quarter of a can. So I freeze it for the next time I need it. Just pull it out of the freezer and let it thaw in the fridge or I'll stick it in some warm water or I'll even microwave it. I know you're not supposed to do that. Cream of chicken soup. I actually make my own. When we lived in Turkey, we couldn't buy it, so I started making my own, and now we prefer that to store-bought. So I make a huge batch, and I will freeze it. Same thing, just leave a little bit of extra space at the top. Refried beans works great, too. I love to use my Rubbermaid containers, and their plastic glass would work great. I just don't like glass because we have lovable kids, and it tends to break at our house. You would be amazed at how much dairy you can actually freeze. Butter, we keep a huge supply of butter on hand. It freezes awesome. I don't even notice a difference between those that have been frozen and not frozen. When I'm ready to use them, I'll pull them out of the freezer and let them thaw in the fridge or on the counter, or I will put them in the microwave and I just won't cook it on full power. I'll cook it or I'll 
I'll cook it on like 20 or 30% power to soften it as opposed to melting it. Cream cheese is another staple that we always freeze. Now with cream cheese, the consistency after it's been frozen isn't quite as smooth. So it's not as great for frostings. If it's just for our family, I will still use it. It tastes fine. It's great. It just looks a little bit off. So I still use it for our family. If I were making food for other people, I wouldn't like decorate cookies with it, but to cook in food or put inside of anything, it's great, tastes fine. It's just a little off looking texture wise. Cool Whip, you buy it in the freezer section. Anything you buy in the freezer section, you can keep frozen, but I love to have Cool Whip on hand. This is a milk container. It does not have milk in it. It actually had water in it and it's now ice because if your freezer's not full, growing up, my mom would always have save her empty milk containers to freeze water in to fill up her freezer so that it uses a less, less electricity. Now, I have no idea if it's true or not, but it's what I do because it's what my mom did. So a little tidbit if your freezer's not full to help you save electricity. But I bet you didn't know you can actually freeze milk. I don't do it regularly because the consistency is a little wonky, but if we are ever going out of town, whatever milk we have left, I will stick in the freezer. And when we get home, I know that we have some milk without having to run to the store. So I don't have to worry about groceries and running to the store right when we get home. Sour cream, you can freeze sour cream. Like a lot of dairy products, the consistency is a little bit off when you're done. So I would not use it to ta as a topping or as like a dip, but it works great if you're going to cook food or if you're gonna put it in cooked food, it's great for cooking or baking. I just don't use it so much as a dip after it's been frozen. Guacamole can even be frozen, seriously. And cheese, a lot of people don't know that you can freeze cheese. My favorite way to freeze it is shredded like this to buy the shredded or the sli already sliced cheese. They freeze the best. However, I will use the block cheese. I'll buy the block cheese and I will freeze that. But once it's been frozen, it will crumble. So if you go to slice it, it will kind of crumble up. So it still works great if you're going to be cooking with it. It's just not great for like slicing for sandwiches or something like that. Meat, you can freeze just about any kind of meat. Take a look in our freezer. We mostly freeze chicken, hamburger, and roast because that's what we use the most. I have a video showing you exactly how I freeze them right up there if you want detailed explanation, but I like to freeze them and store them. Right here in my freezer, I've just got cardboard boxes because I had a bunch of cardboard shoe boxes on hand and they were free, so I just used those. I've used them many times. After several months, they will get a little bit soggy, so they're not ideal, but they were free. Um, if you have something you use and you like to freeze stuff in, let me know in the comments down below because I'd love to invest in something more long-term. But as you can see, we have a ton of meat. With my meat, I do like to put the dates on it, but I also have a system for using it so that I don't, so that I use up the oldest first, so I don't let any meat go bad. I will pull one out at a time from this left box over here. And then when that box is empty, I pull it out and slide the other boxes down. And when I freeze new meat, I will stick it on the right side. So always pulling from the left side so that I'm using the oldest stuff first. This is not the ideal way to freeze meat because if you freeze it like this, you get lots and lots of freezer burn. Check out my video up there showing you how to freeze it a better way to save more. But there are so many more meats you can freeze. We've got in here, we've got the chicken, hamburger, roast, a turkey that we got for really cheap at Thanksgiving but didn't need, so we saved it for springtime. But you can freeze hot dogs, lunch meat, pepperoni. These things, oftentimes we will buy them in bulk and we don't need to use all of them right away, so we will stick them in the freezer and they freeze great. I also love to freeze already cooked meat, chicken and hamburger. I don't do as much now as I used to do because now I can my chicken, but it is a great way to cook the chicken, shred it up and put it in bags. It's so nice having already cooked meat on hand. It makes a meal so fast. Anything in the freezer aisle you can freeze. So here, frozen fruit right here, frozen vegetables. I also like to make, make our own smoothie bags, not so much right now because we're it's been winter and we've been eating mostly oranges and apples and we're kind of sick of them. But in the summer when there's a lot more fruit available, then if we ever have any fruit that's about to go bad on the brink of going bad, we will freeze it into little Ziploc baggies, freeze a bunch of fruit for smoothies. So I can just grab a pouch 
add some juice or some yogurt and I've got a smoothie. We also freeze a popcorn. Did you ever do the science project where you would test to see which popcorn popped best? Supposedly frozen popcorn does the best. So when we have room in our freezer, we will freeze our popcorn. I don't even know what these are called. These are like disposal tabs. I think you can buy them. I just make my own. Whenever I have lemons or limes left over, I'll chop them up and put them in muffin tins, add a little bit of vinegar, pop them in the freezer, and then put them in a Ziploc bag. And when I'm cleaning my kitchen or when our disposal gets yucky, I'll just sprinkle a little bit of vinegar, pop one of these in, and send it down the disposal, and then our kitchen smells like a lemon limey nice scent. A few more things that I don't have on hand right now. Yeast. I buy yeast in large packages at Sam's and I they come in two packages. So one I will put into my fridge and use, the other one I will stick into my freezer. Breadcrumbs. We opened up two, we accidentally opened up two things of breadcrumbs, so I stick one in the freezer, it will keep it fresh. Flowers, things like that will stay fresh. I don't generally freeze them, but if they're gonna go bad, then or nuts, something like that, if they're gonna go bad, I will stick them in my freezer so they don't go bad. If you buy it on sale or use it before it's going to go bad, it's great to freeze things. However, it doesn't save you any money if you leave it sitting in your freezer and then never use it. It just wastes your time. So the one thing that I use so that I do not waste what I put into my freezer is a freezer inventory. You can snag mine in the check in the description box down below, but you can just use any sheet of paper. Here's mine. I like to stick a magnet on the pen so I always have one with me. Whenever I put anything in my freezer, I'll write it and I'll put a tally mark. And then when I pull it out, I'll scratch one off, one tally mark off. So I always know what I have. So at a glance, so I can just check out that inventory at a glance, see what I have on hand so I know what I need to use up. I know there are more things you can freeze. This is just what I have in my freezer right now, what we typically have in our freezer. If there's something else you like to freeze, put a comment down below. I'd love to know to give it a try. Like this video, you are going to love my next one. 10 frugal living tips to help you save money on your groceries. Simple, everyday things that you can do to save money on your groceries. Make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss that video. Thanks so much. See you in the next video.